with so many things happening around the world of sports, you can tell that it is going to be action all the way. Welcome to Plus Sports. And today we will be looking at some of the big stories that are definitely trending and making the headlines, most definitely from the world of football, tennis, and also not forgetting too from the world of rugby. I am not here alone on Plus Sports today. I have got in your bunk Monday, who joins me? But before I actually talk to him, I also have with us uh, the Ian Alson news analyst from Plus TV Africa. Uh, welcome, by the way. And many people are saying, okay, so the ladies are actually talking sports. Absolutely, she is a tennis enthusiast. How are you doing, Akini? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, I'm, I'm doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> good to have you. We also have Ini in the house. Ini, how are you? Yeah, fantastic. It's great to be here. Good, good to be here. Well, let's start off uh, right away today on the show called uh, Plus Sports. And uh, England are actually on top of the uh, World Rugby Rankings for the first time in 15 years with their victory over New Zealand last weekend ahead of what is arguably the biggest week in the team's history. The 19-7 win on uh, Saturday night was not only enough to see Eddie Jones' side move top of the ranking system for the first time under the Australian, but it is also one that saw the All Blacks drop to third behind the Springboks, their joint worst ranking of all time on top of their demotion earlier this year and the 2003 uh, post uh, World Cup um, slump. Now England have not topped the World uh, Cup ranking since the initial run as number ones when they were created a month before the 2003 World Cup with the All Blacks replacing them at the top of the tree in June the following year and Jones's side becoming the fourth different team to sit in first place this calendar year following New Zealand, Wales and Ireland and if you take a look at it England tops at number one uh, and at number five you have Ireland right there. So it is actually a big story, whether you like it or not. And on Plus Sports, let's look at it categorically. Ini, let's focus on the fact that they have made it to the finals. November 2nd, which is this Saturday in particular, they will be going head to head, of course. You know what it is with South Africa. It is going to be a very big one. It happened uh, some years back and South Africa actually had uh, all the win. But this time, England are looking forward to make sure they claim this one. Absolutely. It's great to see England bounce back in the way they've done, you know, in, in previous competitions you know you look at the Lions and you're thinking not quite sure even with an amalgam of quality players going into big tournaments and they won't celebrate the small victory I mean getting top of the ranking they'll celebrate the small victory but they would they would give an arm and leg for for the final <laughs> against South Africa because it's massive they really want to take their pound of flesh 12 years ago South Africa had the upper hand and I do have a feeling the Lions are really up for this one. They, they do look like they're really up for this one. And against New Zealand in the, in the semi-final, against all the odds, the English team came out, showed real quality. But my real worry about them is, have they played the best game ever? Have mm. they played the final before the final? They played so well against, against, um, against um, um, New Zealand. The All Blacks, and, and you wonder sometimes teams go in the semi-final and pull out all the stops, show all the quality, and in the final they don't show up. That's the real doubt for them because uh -huh. scraping through, getting into the semi-final, and then beating the, the overwhelming favourite and getting into the final against a South African team who are getting better and better in the tournament, they're playing better and better, showed real aggression. Um, the, the coach Casey was talking about the fact that in the final they'll keep going doing what they, it wouldn't be pretty it would be about what they like to do confrontational mm. energy arrogance real real physicality and it, it would be tough but but the English are absolutely celebrating it I, I could agree to that. Well, this Saturday will actually tell it all if it will go their way, that is Eddie Jones's side, or it wouldn't. And that's what we're going to look out for. Well, another story definitely also that's actually uh, getting uh, on the lips of each and every one in the world of sports has to do with the story that's got to do with uh, Roger Federer. Uh, no doubt uh, Roger Federer is looking at saying, you know what, I'm taking a break and I'm not going to do this anymore. And that's got to do with the sports tennis. Now, Roger Federer is taking a break. 
and um, this is not actually um, so good for all the tennis fans who were expecting so much from him and expecting to see him play and he say you know what I am done I just need to take this break and when I do I will actually come back for the other tournament so Roger Federer has withdrawn uh, from this week's uh, Paris Masters in order to actually pace himself uh, with next month's ATP finals in London on the horizon a 38 year old is playing in his 22nd season on the ATP tour and won a record extending 10th squeeze indoors championship title on Sunday and he went ahead to say that he's extremely disappointed to have to pull out but uh, he wants to play a, as long as possible on the tour and he's sorry to the French fans in particular who will actually uh, see at Roland Garros in 2020. So we have uh, our very own tennis, uh, tennis enthusiast who's here with us to um, shed more light on the reasons why you think he might actually have to pull out, could it be as a result of his age? No, definitely it's a, as a result of his age. Um, Roger Federer is someone who is very strategic, it seems, in the way he plays. He's still you know, third in the rankings, even though the gap between him and uh, Rafael Nadal is about 2,000 points, mm. as opposed to less than 500 points between Rafael Nadal and Djokovic, who are number one and number two, respectively. So I think, without a doubt, he's looking to play for as long as possible. He's, he's looking at longevity now, mm. and I'm sure that's good for tennis as well, because a lot of the people who organize these matches know that just by putting his name there, they pull a crowd. <laughs> so this is part of why uh, the organizers of the French Masters will be you know, not, not a little disappointed. Um, but I, I get it. I think it makes sense. He's qualified, like you say, for the, uh, the ATP finals, which you know, means that he doesn't really have anything to lose. Yes, he'll lose a few points by pulling out, but not enough to affect his qualification for the finals in London. So um, it makes sense for him to pace himself. Um, he's clearly on top form, like he demonstrated at Basel in front of a home crowd. Um, but he wants to make sure he can continue playing at that level. I like the way he's, he's organized his, his tennis. Um, he doesn't play the kind of stressful tennis that mm -hmm. Rafael Nadal plays or even Murray. Um, so we're hoping to see him for many more years to come. I think he could even last you know, two, three years if he continues at this pace. I, I really appreciate your comments on that, but Ine, what's your take on that? Do you think um, age is still on his side with the way he's actually going recently? Age, age is not on his side, and, and he knows it. And <laughs> it's about managing your body as a sports person. When you get to the twilight of your, of your career, mm -hmm. where you're not playing at the peak of your powers anymore, where things are not falling for you anymore, when you're not just showing up and winning matches, where you have to dig deep a, li a little more, You've got to look at yourself and say, I can't play in every competition realistically. I can't do it regularly. I can't do it every week, every week. You can't produce at that level because what you do not want to do is go out there and throw everything you've, you've won or achieved over the years because if you play in every tournament and all of a sudden you're losing in every tournament, you're not quite up to scratch, it might affect you. You, don't, you want to bow out on a high and that's what he's looking at looking at the relatively lesser um, competitions with due respect to the Paris Masters and looking at the big tournaments, the Grand Slams. The, the, yes. big, the Grand Slams. He's talked about Roland Garros 2020, so the French fans will see him next year, mm -hmm. but they will be bitterly disappointed, I'm certain. The, the, the organizers will be disappointed, frustrated. I think frustrated is the word because, like she said, when, when his name is, is in the picture, I mean, you're getting 30, 40 percent more fans coming out to say, want to see the great man. And it's, it's great for him and it's great for tennis as well, because what you want to do is, I know he's not going to play forever, but you want him around <laughs> for a longer time. You want him to, to be, I mean, when you look at Rafael Nadal, or when you look at Roger Federer, you associate elegance with what he does. You look at so much poise, so yes. much grace about what he, how he goes about his job. And, and for fans, what do we care? We want to see him play. Well, I mean, I just, I just want to emphasize the issue yeah. of strategy a bit more because okay. um, people who know the way they, they you know, attribute points to these matches know that you know, you're looking at a Grand Slam, you're looking at 2,000 points. Uh, whereas, you know, ATP Masters, a thousand points. So you have to sort of check and say, is it worth my, you know, squandering myself like yeah. this just to achieve? And what, what are the points I'll get if I play in this match as opposed to the other match? And, you know, people have said, look, how long will he last? It's really a matter of ego and fitness, you know, because he, we want him to stick around till, you know, as long as possible. But is he likely to want to be relegated to being like a journeyman, as people have tagged Filipiano Lupe mm. Lopez, <laughs> where you just show up for the love of the game or you show up and you want to still remain within the top 10. Sure. We want him to be in the top 10 because we want to stay with that image we have of him. 
So if you want him to be in the top 10, then you should actually um, celebrate with him now that he needs to pull out and probably get uh, a little recess and ensure that he gets back stronger. I'd like to say thank you very much to Senior News Analyst Ekene Zeji for being here, also a tennis enthusiast <laughs> all the way right here from Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break and when we come back, we will bring to you more stories, especially coming from football. There's a big news and you need to hear it. It's all here only on Plus Sports.